Good evening, you're watching News Cafe on the Solar News Channel. Sitting in for Jing Magsaysay, I'm Amelin Veloso. And I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Today, we are at the University of the Philippines College of Engineering Theater as part of our celebrations for our one-year anniversary on air. And tonight, we are joined by some of the leading media practitioners and personalities in the country. He is a multi-awarded broadcaster and has decades of experience in the industry. His voice is one of the most well-known voices in the business. Please welcome tonight, Mr. Ray Langit. And our next Thank guest you. is a veteran journalist and an opinion columnist for the Philippine Star and Filipino Star Ngayon. He is Jarius Bondok. Welcome, Jarius. Thank you for being here tonight. And our next guest is famously known as Juana Chain. She is a political activist and a media personality. She is May Paner. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. We have a very passionate crowd tonight. So let's begin the discussions with an overview of the media landscape. Um, I'd like to ask all of you your thoughts on the Philippine brand of journalism, maybe from your experiences from press to print, to television, and of course now social media is emerging. So shall we is emerging? So shall we start with you, Ray? Uh, actually, wala naman pagkakaiba ang uh, practice ng media in the Philippines. Uh, just like, uh, for instance, ako, uh, I came from uh, being a mere uh, reporter from the field uh, until I rose uh, through the ranks and became a news uh, news director newscaster, yeah, analyst, and then I became station manager, news station manager. Yeah, the, the general rule, if you are a, a journalist, yeah, as always, you are the so-called uh, yeah, watchdog of the state, watch of, watchdog of the government. However, the only difference in the Philippines, Dito, when you safeguard and defend uh, the freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and freedom of the press, most of the time, yeah, you, are, you pay with your own lives. Dito lang sa Philippines, ang mga journalists, eh, bibilang natin, eh, sa kamay natin, eh, yeah, na kadalasan, eh, yun ang nagiging resulta ng kanilang magiging truthful, and they, when they pursue the truth and uh, shout the wrongdoings of the government, yeah, nasasakripisyo ang lives ng ating mga practitioners. So freedom comes at a great risk, basically, because we are one of the most um, freedom, you know, we have the highest level of press freedom in the mm -hmm. region. No? How about you, Jarius? Do you say the same? Do you see the same? Do you have the same view? Yeah, I share the same view as uh, Mr. Langit. Um, uh, journalism is a glamorous profession, they say, but it's also a dangerous profession, mm -hmm. especially broadcasting. Um, masyadong malapit sa death threats sa broadcasting. Mm -hmm. um, most especially for, for uh, local, bro meaning, meaning provincial uh, broadcasters, because they, they courageously expose corruption, uh, in, at the municipio or the city hall or provincial capital, they expose uh, uh, crimes like uh, illegal logging, drugs, and uh, they pay the price with, with their lives. Especially in the provinces, I hear, the media yeah. practitioners in the province. But how about you, May? Have you received such threats? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, different from them, I come from, I mean, I was born to social media, the advocacy of Wanna Change, was born to YouTube, but I have my share of threats. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which makes uh, my life very exciting. <laughs> Certainly. But, but mm. May is also a threat to bad politicos. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and proud. <laughs> and that's what the media is for, is watchdogs. As you, oh, yeah. as Ray said earlier, you're watchdogs, and therefore exactly. there is kind of that, you know, exactly. they know they're being watched. Yeah. Exactly. They can't get away now, with. let's take a look at the distinct qualities of each medium. What are its distinct qualities in terms of audience share? Because there was a time, if you remember, let me see, there was a time it was only TV or radio. Only even radio. Back in the day, radio. Right. But then with the emergence of social media, yes. they said the radio was now? dying even because yeah. of that. And even what TV, they're already saying that. 
What do you guys have to say? They say television has the, mm -hmm. uh, because of its reach, it has also the widest audience, mm -hmm. followed by radio, and then followed by print. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how the, the media researchers are now rating uh, social media, because the phenomenon is such that 65% uh, of Filipinos are now wired, meaning we're connected to the internet using our gadgets and, uh, and uh, mobile phones. Even our maids, our drivers, our gardeners mm -hmm. have, uh, have smartphones, right? Yes. Um, I've been talking to some bloggers who say by, by next year, from 65%, by the end of 2014, it will be 100% uh, of the population wired, uh, so connected to the internet. So I guess that would... Uh, change the media landscape? In the early years of broadcasts, because uh, I started in the 60s, <laughs> 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 in the 60s, uh, when uh, yeah, radio actually is the, yeah, the yeah, medium. Yeah, and because of the technology, and, uh, television eventually yeah, was able to compete with radio yeah, when it comes to uh, news uh, information, yeah, dati dati kasi ang radio, wherever you are, you can get information yeah, through communications lang. Kahit na simple, yeah, simple uh, over over, o kaya simple na yeah, telephone, kahit na yeah, landline, you can communicate and uh, you can get information. Not like television, but this time television has uh, remote, no? Yeah, they can they can do yeah, remote uh, broadcast already and give a live with visuals, no, a live uh, perspective of what's being uh, yeah what what's being uh, introduced uh, on the uh, screen. But uh, right now, what I can say is, if you have to compare the broadcasts, yeah, like uh, yung medium namin ng radio. Uh, I think uh, aside from the technology, the characteristics of Filipinos, yeah, ito ang uh, nagbibigay ng uh, yeah, continuous strengths sa broadcast, sa radio, no? Dito sa atin. When I say characteristic of Filipinos, yeah, while in the Western countries, medyo ang radio nila almost gone, almost history. Pero dito sa Philippines, it still has to stay in this part of Southeast Asia, especially Filipinos. Dahil dito sa atin, walang tinatawag na peace, no? The real definition of peace. So that every now and then, we can get fresh news, we can get uh, controversies, we can get uh, yeah, scandals, yeah, name it. Kaya ito ang nagiging... Uh, yeah, strengths and secret of uh, broadcasts in the Philippines. Uh, may I just add that there, there is a strange uh, phenomenon also about the Philippine media. It's our paranoid constitution. And uh, the constitution prohibits foreigners from investing in the media in the Philippines. Only Filipinos may, may own uh, media outfits, newspapers or uh, broadcast uh, outlets. Now, I believe that, that that provision of our paranoid constitution should be removed so that uh, foreigners can buy into local media, domestic media companies, and improve the technologies available now. Okay. How about you, May? Uh, well, ako naman kasi, kasi mostly, you know, I work in the social media. Uh, it's really good kasi na-level niya yung playing field, di ba, with social media. Dati, talagang para maging writer ka, maging journalist ka, kailangan nag-aral ka. Aba, no, may social media, kahit ako. ba? Ako ngayon ay writer na. I mean, I blog. ba? Kaya nga, na naalala ko dati, a-attend ako ng isang press con, hinihiwala yung social media dun sa traditional kasi may away sila eh. Yung bang ngayon, nakapag-blog lang, kala mo writer na, kami nga nag-aral, di nga nag-research siya, nagkwento lang. I mean, you know, in a way, there's good and bad about it, but... Um, where, where I come from in the social media, ang gustong gusto ko naman sa kanya kasi lalong-lalong tayo mga kabataan, hindi ba? Doon tayo tumatambay. 
At saka napaka-immediate nung ba, meron kang sinabi, pag meron silang gusto, agad-agad ilalike ka. Pag ayaw naman, may sagot agad. Ang ganda ng discourse sa social media. Kasi um, real time eh. Di ba, pag merong news, um, usually nga ang mga reporters nga nag-aabang sa social media. Like for example, in my case, meron akong sinabi, tatawagan din nila ako, uh, Wana, may sinabi kang ganito sa typhoon, pwede bang ganyan? So, di ba, nauuna pa yung social media actually. And May raises an interesting point where before with traditional media, when you're listening to the radio, reading the paper, you cannot react right yeah. away, right? It's one, per, it's one way. But with social media, there's more interaction. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a threat to newspapers, you know, to radio even, that social media is taking over? As far as radio is concerned, I don't think so. Actually, a social media, the co complement na sa amin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, in our daily shows, in our daily program, we utilize uh, social media. We utilize, because uh, now, Interactive, ang tawag nila. Yeah. Hindi yung kagay dati, you do one-way broadcasts, you do commentaries, you do analysis. Pero this time, you get feedback, immediate feedback through social media, through text messaging. Kaya alam mo kung ano feel, kung ano pulso ng tao. Yeah, kaya kapag sinasabi na may mga survey, survey, that they have to spend the how many days yeah, to conduct the survey. I mean, it's spontaneous. Every day we conduct a survey. Every program we conduct survey. And you are speaking by me, speaking of millions uh, listeners, no? Yeah, ang, fee, ang feedback, ang bilis. Kaya complimenting para sa akin ang social media. Same with print. Um, for instance, uh, Philippine Star, you can read it uh, online. Yeah. Um, and then you can react to our reports and uh, commentaries by Facebook, Twitter. Or you can you can post your uh, your reaction right there, like below my my column, for instance. You can you can post your reaction there. So everyone kind of has a voice. Yes. Uh -huh. um, um, the, the the fight that May was talking about between uh, mainstream and social media had to do with uh, with young uh, rules, because journalism, ethics and uh, and rules, like in in. In print, uh, in newspapers, and in, in uh, mainstream broadcast outlets, there are gatekeepers before any news is uh, read on air or or printed. There will be uh, there will be editors to screen to question every name, every date that is uh, included in the report. Now, uh, citizen journalists, ang sinasabi ng mainstream media men, have not gone through this training, but then. Uh, they're also learning in the process because they know that uh, at the end of the day, if, if, if we are inaccurate, for instance, in the mainstream media, we lose our credibility. Same with the, those, in, those bloggers. Mm -hmm. If they become unreliable when it comes to, uh, say, for instance, uh, dishing out facts, then they, they tend to lose their following. Yeah. May you wanted to add something? Yeah, in fact, ang galing kasi you can really verify, verify facts ng mabilis. Like for example, somebody puts a pakendi, may, nga, may pangalan, di ba? Hibinay. Agad-agad, totoo ba yan? Maka naman hindi. Ang bilis mag-verify ng mga tao, agad-agad alam nila, they will go to the source because the person who saw it will say, ako, I can vouch for it, totoong nakita ko yan. Yep. Yun naman yung maganda. Kasi yep. talagang agad-agad, um, uh, because of social media, with the help of, of, of the traditional media, yung interplay mas magara. Ang social, ang, ang social media ngayon, by the way, ano, they are recognized to have contributed to social upheavals also. In, in Cairo, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, recently, in uh, Indonesia, in Turkey. No. Um, yung mga instant demonstrations, these were called out through the social media, yeah. by Facebook, by, you know, uh, there would be some, there would be some, siguro, some of them would have uh, political uh, agendas, or, you know. But once you, you post in the social media that you want to organize a protest, okay, let's meet at, say, Plaza Miranda at so-and-so date and time, the, the, others, the, the other uh, social media users will overwhelm your hidden agenda. They will, they will go there, for instance, yung, yung million, yung people million march, people yeah. march. Yeah, people no? march. That was against pork barrel. Now, some, some politicians wanted to, you know, Pasig Club, Umepal. to make Pasig Club. Epal, yeah. no? 
Pero fun. once they get there, they'll be overwhelmed. Because wala na, hindi naman papansin. Baka siraan pa sila. Diba? It's a social diba media. Diba Corona went and he was booed? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. So this is cyber people power, right? And yes. incidentally, yes. We have the man over here who popularized the term. It was Ray Langit who started the people power term, right? Back in wow. the 70s. Ikaw Trivia pala yun? In the 70s, uh, let me just share here to you. Yeah, in the 70s, uh, during martial law, we created a program called uh, Metro Manila Banat. Together with Paring Kadoy. Paring Ray and Paring Kadoy, it's uh, parang yeah, nasa ponduan lang. We are, we are discussing anything under, under the sun here. Paring kaloy, paring. But every morning before the program, I would start the program by saying, itong palatuntunang walang kinatatakutan. Sapagat ang pangas nito ay kapangyarihan na nagmumula sa mamamayan, people power. Every morning I would say people power uh, with uh, matching echo. <laughs> Approximately after 10 years, thank you. Approximately after 10 years in 86, it's, it became a byword in EDSA, byword in the Philippines, and copied by other countries uh, as well. Thank you for bringing that, right? We have the brand right here. Oh, I learned so this something is the power new today. Of the media, right? Thank yeah. you. I guess it's a good mm -hmm. teaser to the next segment, mm -hmm. too, because I was saying uh, when May was talking about social media and everybody's a journalist, at the same time, we have to be very careful about the facts because mm -hmm. people react right away and yeah. post things also that are not true. So. Exactly. So we should find a way as well to ensure that the information that is sent out there is accurate. So I guess that's where everybody comes in to help out, bring out the right facts and correct the ones that need to be corrected. If I may add a little mm -hmm. more, no? Kasi ang uh, sekreto naman ng credibility ng, uh, ng mga institutions, uh, you may uh, call it institutions, especially in the news uh, gathering and news presentation, yung, yung facts, no? Facts. But... Yeah, with the uh, with the new social media, ang dali to prove what you wanted to, to convey. Yeah, with the usage of the, the camera, pinos mo lang yung camera in one sentence lang or one liner lang, easily, they can get the message. Hindi ka mukha noong kapanahon na namin, sarili kayo. You have to go to National Library. You have to look for the government officials. You have to dial the landline with party line. You know, yes. ang hirap, <laughs> na alam yun, ano? <laughs> ang hirap na pinagdana namin. That's why, even mga old-timers, okay. na mga peers namin mm. in the broadcast, especially in the print, mm. they cannot immediately get away from the mm. yeah, Underwood typewriter. And sometimes, uh, there, there was a time in uh, some, some newspapering naman, we used to, to uh, wala pa rin fax noon, and then, pag na-assign kami sa, sa, sa war zone or yung calamity area, we would have to dictate our stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. So It was really a different time yeah, we, ha we had to, walang <laughs> typewriter, for instance, yes. walang, walang, walang computers mm -hmm. noon. Yung, yung, hand, handwritten stories, and mm -hmm. then we, we find a phone, dictate mm -hmm. to, to our editor. Yung editor naman, nakaganyan telepono oh, yeah. sa tela. <laughs> yes, nakaganyan nagta type. Ang hirap. Wow, so iba na talaga ang panahon ngayon compared to before. But in the meantime, yeah. we'll talk more about media practices when we come back after these messages. You are still watching News Cafe, and we're still joined by our guests, Ms. May Paner, Mr. Jaris Bondo, and Mr. Ray Langit. Earlier, we were talking about media practices, and this time, let's focus on how media has handled national issues, particularly the ones that we've had this year. So, Mitzi, I guess let's start with the pork barrel. What do you think was media's role in bringing out this issue? It was basically an expose in print, and then uh, broadcast pick it up. And uh, it became a national issue because of broadcast. Because ang ang bumabasa lang ng newspapers ko konte uh, educated the educated class sabi nga. Uh, when when broadcast pick it up, uh, television especially, it became a national issue. Naintindihan ng mga tao. Eh. And then uh, the social media was used to organize the protests against the pork barrel. Uh, may mga instant ano nga, di ba? Uh, demonstrations in various cities all over the country. Um, at 
uh, and uh, to some extent, it radicalized our, our people in the sense that people began to realize that most of our problems are rooted in the pork barrel. Bakit tayo binabaha sa Maynila, for instance? Because what money that should otherwise have been used for flood control, ayun, ginamit, winalda sa pork barrel, binulsa. Bakit nagkakaroon ng landslide sa Surigao, Agusan, ganyan? Because money that could otherwise have been used, maray namamatay doon, no? Uh, money that could otherwise have been used to relocate, to resettle the people there, uh, winaldas, binulsa ng pork barrel. Bakit inaagaw ng China ang Scarborough Shoal? Money that could otherwise have been used to buy frigates, uh, fighter jets, binulsa ng mga politiko natin. So all our, our, all our woes, national woes, na-realize ng mga tao dahil sa pork barrel because of the media. Yeah, so, um, dun sa amin kasi, when that news came out of Janet Napoles, the rage was just so huge that uh, we said, uh, come on, let's organize and use the social media so that we can, kasi ang hirap din yung, you know, when you're an activist that you're just doing it on social media, parang selectivist lang ang dating mo. Kasi ayaw namin yung nakapag-like ka lang sa Facebook, akala mo aktivista ka na. But because of the pork barrel issue, actually, nag-organize sa social media, tapos lumabas sa kalsada, di ba? tapos pinick up ng lahat, ng traditional, ng television, ng social media, ang bilis kumalat ng, ng pag-intindi doon sa issue. Kaya nga, di ba, yung bilib na bilib ka, kasi 9 out of 10 Filipinos understand the pork barrel issue. Um, ako gusto gusto ko yung nagre-relate yung lahat-lahat. In fact, because of that, um, ako for example, in my own personal experience as Wanna Change, no, uh, we do viral videos. But because wala kaming masyadong budget, you know, we try to, to, alam mo yung, to, to make people understand the issue. When, for example, they see me sa rally, when they look at me, they already know the message, di ba? That's why I go there, organized ng social media, and I go there, nakabarrel, stop the pork barrel, tayo ang boss, naka-pig snout ako, naka-miss piggy outfit ako. Makikita mo, sa social media, kinalat yan. And then, tuwang-tuwa ako nun kasi the following day after that, siguro nga talagang matindi yung issue kasi nag-cover kami sa apat na broadsheets. So sabi namin, wow, ganun pala ka, ka sexy ang issue ng pork barrel. Tsaka ganun siya kinakagat ng maraming tao. At kabataan, across the board yan. Kahit na anong ano ka, nasang estado ka sa lipunan, kahit ano pang background mo, mayaman, mahirap. Lahat ng tao kasi apektado ng pork barrel. And then I think you make a good uh, case study for what the media wants to cover also. Yeah. You say something quickly, in a soundbite, good picture. And I think um, earlier, no, we were talking about fact-checking and also filtering all this information. You see a good picture, you hear facts, and you think, wow, parang totoo to. Mm -hmm. Post natin, share. So um, I don't know your reactions also with all these disasters. For example, another one recently we're very close to now, Typhoon Yolanda. Typhoon Many Yolanda people are posting all kinds well. of information. These disasters, earthquakes. of course. Mm -hmm. Um, yung Yolanda, no, there's something very unique about uh, this situation. We were, we were told that this was a super howler uh, that was going to hit us. Yes, the information then, was there, actually. Yes, we were told that there were storm surges. Yes, and very accurate. Uh -huh. yes. and, uh, and that is why broadcast especially, but, but also print, no? well, uh, newspapers, ma the major newspapers and the major broadcast networks were able to field reporters right there where they knew that the, uh, the uh, right there at the path of the typhoon Haiyan, uh, Yolanda no and then they were able to report immediately what happened so we were all shocked especially in sa tv dahil ano ito eh, no? yung yung makikita mo in in vivid color the the ano di ba? yung the uh, yung horror of the destruction and then uh, yung nai-interview rin ng, ng TV tsaka ng radio, uh, wala, nagugutom na kami, wala kaming matirhan, no, and, then, and then, of course, dahil nauna rin yung media, tapos tsaka palang dumarating yung food aid, yung relief, ang naging reaction ng mga tao all over the country, and even all over the world, nothing is happening down there, What? bakit ganyan, bakit ganyan? Eh, syempre, hindi naman sa inaano ko, no? yung talagang mabagal naman talaga, but it, it really takes time to bring a, a truckload of relief goods eh. Tsaka yung mga relief workers. Kasi yung relief organization, iisipin pa nila uh, yung security. 
yung logistics, yes. yung paano i-aeroplano o ibabarko ito, mga ganun, tsaka malaking ano ito. Eh, yung reporter o yung TV crew, dumating sila ron, ang bit-bit lang nila isang camera, isang mikropono, o yung, yung reporter, di ba, uh, tape recorder, uh, um, uh, cell, cell phone and the iPad, gagawa ka na ng story, ah. di ba? So, ang bilis, mabilis ka talagang hamak kesa sa relief goods and workers. Kaya ang tendency ng yung mga nanonood, gigil na gigil tayo kung pwede lang, sakali na natin lahat ng mga opisyales na ano, di ba? But that really comes with the territory now because it, it's instant now, the information. Yes. We mm. get it immediately. So, mm. in media, how do you think can we balance that given that we do know that reality that you mentioned that it's easier, for example, for a news team to get to Tacloban rather than a, 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 a truckload of relief goods. So how do we balance that, that we're able to deliver the message, but at the yes. same time, we're not able to create, for example, panic when it's not needed, or anger when it's may, it may not be the case. So how do we balance that? How do we, you know, try to avoid being uh, sensational at the same time, paint the right picture? Hello, uh, Amelie, when it comes to uh yeah, crisis like this. Kasi ako, nadaanan ko na yung napakarami mga milestone eh, crisis like uh, pinatubo eruption. Eh. Yes. yes. And, um, yeah, earthquake <laughs> ng uh, Baguio. Uh, I was always always on the top of the, the coverages, no? Alam mo, yeah, sa day one eh, yeah, kahit na magkausap kami ni, ni Mayor Romualdez, he was in front of the, yeah, the seashore, no? Naro siya sa baybayin mismo and trying to, to feel uh, kung gano'ng kalakas talaga itong uh, paparating na si y Yolanda. Yolanda. And uh, you can hear it uh, through this sound. Eh. Marating mo talaga yung ihip ng hangin. At saka yung description niya, kahit hindi siya reporter, ang description niya, so vivid, na sabi niya, Ray, pag hindi ako mawak dito sa isang kamay ko, tatangayin ako. Umahawak siya sa isang strong na, na, na concrete, no? So, alam mo, na merong darating na ganyang kalakas. At ang sabi niya, yeah, ang landfall, medyo tinatansya nila kung saan ang, uh, kung sino ang immediate na tatamaan. Yeah, obviously, doon sa lakas na yun, eh, talagang wipe out ang lahat ng mga houses, no? Yeah, doon sa, yeah, doon sa shore. Yeah, however, ang hindi... Yeah, na anticipate while Pagasa and the rest of our agencies in the government can measure and describe. Pero ang hindi alam ng mga tao, ano ba itong storm surge? Ito ba ay kasing lakas ng ipo-ipo, kasing lakas ng hurricane, kasing lakas ng uh, tidal wave? Yeah, English, eh, kahit na kami, hindi na yung describe Pero ako, since may experience ako rito sa dito sa storm surge, we have a small beach dito sa may Batangas. Ang storm surge is not only yeah, the center of the, yeah, the, the wind. Hindi lang hangin, hindi lang yung ulan, but ang nakalimutan lang i-describe, yung sand na naggagaling sa sea, ito ang itatabun sa iyo. Ito ang yahampas sa bahay mo. Ito ang gigiba sa iyo, yung structure mo. Yeah, itong sand na ito, you could just imagine yeah, two-story building sand na papasok sa buong bahay mo. Hindi na i-describe in toto kung ano ibig sabihin ng storm surge. Kaya marami pa rin sa mga kababayan natin, sorry to, to accept. Yeah, hindi, uh, hindi nakayanan noong continuous na panawagan. Eh. Yeah, doon sa ganong klase ng, uh, yeah, ng maring nasabi mong yeah, injecting fear. No? Pero kung kinakailangan, talagang dapat takutin. Pero alam mo, ang, ang totoo na tayo mga Pilipino, if you have a property, if you have only one house, and if you have only one family, ipaglalaban mo hanggang patayan. Hindi mo iiwanan kadalasan Ito ang nagiging mentality na ating mga kababayan. Hindi nila, uh, hindi nila naiisip yung, uh, uh, yung exchange to lives. No? Uh, 
hanggang makaka-stay ka do sa bahay, ginagawa nila yun. Kaya nga yung ibang mga local governments, yeah, they are uh, prompted to even get authorities para bitbitin literally, physically, para alisin sila. Yeah, nakalulungkot lang, hindi nila na-measure yung devastating na impact and strength no tinatawag natin storm surge. And this is what the media does, no? It helps educate the public. And I think we can always learn in hindsight. Itong nangyayari, dami na natin typhoon, dami na natin disasters. Why haven't we learned? But I guess this is, this is what's happening, right? And what happened too in this recent case is um, many of our frustrations with the government came out and the international community kind of knew about it. So yes. I want to ask you, especially during this time, our president, Pinoy, keeps saying, the media tends to just focus on the negative information. Do you think that media only cover negative news? That's not true. Uh, the That's media not would, true. Yeah, the media would report the <laughs> events <laughs> as, as seen by uh, reporters, per se. Now, uh, if there are reactions to those reports, then the, the, our officials had better take stock. No? Uh, nila. Bakit? Dumating ba talaga sila ron? Sino, one of our officials, hindi ko na sasabihin, sinabihan siya nung uh, CNN, or is it BBC? Sabi na, there are bodies up there in the trees. And nobody has uh, bothered to yeah. pull, pull, remove pull, them. bring down the bodies and, and give them a proper burial. Anong sagot nung isang official? Ah, bagong, bagong bangkay yan, those are new bodies. Yeah. Sa puno, may umakyat doon, pa, tapos nakasabit sa puno para mamatay. Bago, new bodies. I think that's crazy. Yun nga ang problema eh. Uh, the, our officials should stop blaming the media for, for everything. No? Uh, in, instead, they should start acting. Yung, yung binanggit ni Manong Ray, storm surge. Local officials are supposed to attend seminars on disaster prepa preparedness. And... Storm surges are explained by, uh, by DOSD officials. The, the, all of these things. The tsunami, mga ganyan. No? Inexplain lahat sa kanila yan. Eh. If local officials do not know the meaning of storm surge, it's their fault. Kumbaga, natutulog. And absent siya siguro nung nag-seminar. And, uh, and local officials are also given geohazard maps of their respective barangays, towns, cities, uh, districts, and provinces. If they don't have those geohazard maps, at, at the start of their terms, huh? if they don't have those geohazard maps, then there's something wrong with them. Winala nila, hindi nila pinag-aralan, hindi nila siniseryoso, dahil ang inaatupag nila pag nanakaw sa kaban ng bayan, yun ang problema. Nabibisto tuloy sila. You know, one, one thing is for certain, because of media, we're able to see these things. We're able to report it immediately so that we all can act on it. As uh, May mentioned here, like, hugs na muna instead of uh, hogs, di ba? Yeah. You can, uh -huh. like, immediately generate help, um, generate all these needed assistance. Uh, but before I get to that, no, mm -hmm. interesting lang kasi, tungkol dyan sa mga negativity. Ako, for example, no, I have a very strong voice in social media. And I can really sense that there are people out there who really want to always stop me from, from, from talking. Mm -hmm. Agad-agad, meron silang sinasabing, oh, imbis na ano, salita ka na naman ng ganyan, tumulong ka na lang. Hindi nila naiintindihan na criticism is actually caring. I don't know if you guys have read uh, what Peke Galiaga wrote. Yes, very good, yes. Wonderful, mabuhay ka, direct Peke. Kasi ang sinasabi niya, why can I not criticize and help at the same time? Yes. Sobra naman kayo. Sabi niya, kung mag page ko to, sinesensor niyo pa ako, at ang feeling niyo hindi ko dapat sinasabing sinasabi ko, nagkukulang kayo, dapat niyong malaman yan. Diba? But anyways, um, ako rin ginaganon din nila. I, I mean, ang dami-dami ng mga salitang sinasabi sa akin. Kasi, diba, ganyan naman sa, um, sa social media, eh, diba? Ang dami-dami rin. Like, for example, ako ang dami-dami kong mga trolls who will tell me, hoy, ikaw, baboy ka, kala mo kung sino kang makapagsalita, di ba? Hindi mo nga mapapayat ang sarili mo. Yung mga ganong klase yung mga salita. Kasi ganun talaga ka-open sa social media. Kaya nga dapat sa atin, napaka-critical natin, I mean, what we put out there, and how we are also able to accept what people tell of us, no? But it's also important na, like kung sinasabi, is yung citizenship. Gamitin natin yung social media 
to be more critical, yes. to put the truth out there, but also, let us not just be observers. Yung nakikipag-awi ka lang sa Facebook, ang haba-haba na, 300 na yung exchanges ninyo, hindi ka pa maka-move on. No? I think it's really, really important to make it co concrete to your life. Like, for example, kami, uh, we're the Scrap Work Network, and we talk about the PIDA. Mm -hmm. But because of Yolanda, we um, we are engaging people in YAKAP, no? Um, mm -hmm. YAKAP Project Hugs, YAKAP Not Hugs, hindi mga baboy. So ngayon, we are welcoming uh, survivors of Yolanda into our homes. Diba? We are YAKAPers. Yung survivors are YAKAPs. At yung mga tumutulong na magbigay ng, kung makakapagbigay ng trabaho, yeah. pera, pagkain, gamot, we call them mm -hmm. YAKAP peers. So please, let's all volunteer and use mm -hmm. our our social media capability so that we can better our nation. Yeah, maraming limitations din, no? Yeah, pagka dumating yung crisis at saka biglaan, alam nyo, lahat natutulala, no? Yeah, for instance, we have learned our lessons from the past calamities and crisis. Yeah, hanggang ngayon, di pa rin tayo natuto. Speaking of uh, relief goods, ang relief goods, we have enough relief goods. Eventually, with the support of foreign aid. And dami niyan. Yung iba nga, na ipiprint na ngayon na nangangabulok. However, bakit naburyong ang napakarami nating kababayan doon sa, mide, doon sa gitna ng, uh, ng late, ng summer? Why? Because if you have to rely on the land transport to distribute all the relief goods, hindi pa pwede. Impossible. Dahil nga, Bagsakan lahat ang mga poste. Ang lahat ng kuryente, ang wires. Nasa gitna ng karsada. Paano ka makadadaan dyan? I was arguing with the officer ng Air Force. Sabi ko, uh, ito, feel ko lang. Because right now, we are almost five days already. I've been shouting on the air. Yeah, drop. Airdrop. 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 Sabi ko, alam mo, Ray, uh, meron ding dapat i-consider dyan. Yeah, are you sure na yung babagsakan mo yung tamang recipient? But of course, yung babagsakan mo yung <laughs> isang area naman from the air you can see kung ano yung devastated na area. Okay, baka raw may tamaan, baka raw pag-agawan, baka raw yung pag-awayan. You know, ako, in my small way, we have a, we have, uh, a foundation. Kami, tuwi magbibigay kami na magdidistribute kami ng mga relief goods. We have to do coupons. We have to do yeah, mga advance yeah, distribution. Why? Because we have limited relief goods. Ayaw namin mag-away, ayaw namin magkaroon ng chaos. If you are distributing 1,000, 1,000 pa mimigay namin beforehand do sa bahay-bahay para sure na sila makatatanggap. However, dito hindi mo na pwedeng gawin yun eh. Yeah, time is of the essence. Kapag nakita mo, head of the family, na yung kanyang mga anak hindi kumakain for five days, anong gagawin mo? Talagang kung hindi ka magwawala, uh, survival ito eh, di ba? It's our job to report mm -hmm. the events. Like uh, 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 a month ago, a month before this, uh, the, the typhoon, the super typhoon, the, our leaders announced that we would be acquiring a squadron of fighter jets. Mm -hmm. no, a squadron of fighter jets from, from uh, Korea. So a squadron would be about 14 to 16 uh, aircraft. Now, and then the media reported that. Mm -hmm. and then the media again reported that, we, uh, that uh, there are no airdrops mm -hmm. because there are practically no helicopters. Now, the, the viewers, the newspaper readers, would put two and two together and would research using the social media uh, ordinary viewers can easily research that if we, if we have money to buy a squadron, say 15 fighter jets, why don't we just uh, buy helicopters? We could, we could purchase 125 helicopters for the price of 15 jets. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't need, as, as Manong Ray said, they don't need landing strips. They can, la they can land on any patag, any, any, you know, okay. so, so, in other words, uh, but uh, those who patronize the media would themselves conclude that this is what we need. And so they would, they would form their own conclusions also about our national leaders. Mm -hmm. 
Well, okay, Jarius, Ray, and May, we will now open our discussions to our audience after we come back after the break. But in the meantime, I know, May, you have to leave because you have a previous engagement. But thank you so much oh, for thank joining you. in thank our you very discussion. Much, May. Thank you. Well, we will pause for a short break, but we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. You're still watching News Cafe and still with us, Mr. Jairus Bondok and Mr. Ray Langit. And now let's proceed to our open forum. Mitzi, yes. you have our first question. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Amelyn. It's been a very interesting discussion. And of course, we have some questions and comments from the audience. So I'll be calling some of the students and they'll be coming forward to ask the questions. First, Ali Viray from DLSU. Hello. Um, good evening. Um, my question is for both. Um, earlier you talked about citizen journalism and I guess I just want to uh, ask more about it. And uh, my question is, I guess, how does alternative media like citizen journalism help widen the perspective of the audience? How does new media, new media. widen yes. the perspective of the audience in the light of citizen journalism? Right. Yeah, while my base is radio, I can speak of radio, but yeah, I evolved to television as well. We have once a week a program on television and uh, I write uh, my column as well. My interviews are being, uh, yeah, I, I am transcribing all my interviews and this is being yeah, printed not only in the newspaper but as well as dito sa internet. Okay. Ang perspective, kaya widen, hindi ka mukha dati, kinakailangan makinig ka. Maige, no? e, to know and to balance your e, vote opinions no? or read the newspaper and uh, scrutinize. This time, a e, greater advantage of the uh, social media, you can uh, post both print with the support of uh, either video so support of picture. Unlocking, uh, unlawak dito in terms of perspective. Yeah, madali mong uh, ma-explain kung ano ang uh, target uh, yeah, na message na gusto mong uh, i-convey at saka sapul mo kagad ang uh, market na target mo. Okay. Um, uh, yes, yes, Jarius. Yung, uh, uh, yung citizen journalist may want to specialize and in so doing, you can pick up pointers from the mainstream media for instance, you want to specialize in, in political coverage or sports or business or entertainment or culture. Uh, pick up ideas from, from the mainstream media and uh, you would know, you would be able to, to, to do better in, in the social media. Okay. It's Let's good see. training also maybe for a future career in the media. Now we have Therese from the UP College of Social Science and, and Philosophy. Hi, good afternoon, Paul. Uh, my question is, what do you think about the extent of coverage of the media about the recent super typhoon issue? Um, is it eno enough or is it too much already? Yeah, uh, I, I find it uh, superb ang uh, naging coverage ng media. Yeah, while uh, I cannot blame some of the uh, yeah, major yeah, neophyte in broadcasting, uh, neophyte in actual crisis, Alam mo kapag narong kami mismo, ako kasi ay I, I came from the ano eh, I came from the field, no? Hindi ako yeah, overnight na naging anchor, tapos eh, naging uh, news analysts. I came from the field and I know, I feel, and uh, I have experience. In fact, I was one of the very first uh, radio reporter during our stint with uh, Radio Patrol. We were the first batch of Radio Patrol. I was sent by our network to cover and to unfold the uh, anomalous yeah, handling of uh, some people in the interlock. In doing so, habang nag interview ako ng mga witnesses, ang na-interview ko mismo, yung culprit, yung, yung batch mismo ng mga, yeah, ng mga gabawa noong yeah, pouring ink 
in all uh, in all uh, ballot boxes, no? So ang sabi niya sa akin, do you want to get more authentic interviews? Sabi ko, of course. I, I was young and uh, courageous. Gusto ko mga actual, di ba? Sinama nila kami. I was uh, with, you know, with uh, Danny Hernandez at the time. Yeah, Danny Hernandez uh, belongs to yeah, the television division. I was with radio. They joined for us, kami, but we were eventually hostage. No? Yeah, we were the first batch ng, uh, na hostage the reporter. We sat down, pinopo nila kami sa damuan for three hours ordeal. We don't know what to do. Sabi ko ako sino mag-survive sa amin, siya magkukwento ng aming story. No? Yeah, ngayon, going back to, to the Yolanda yeah, tragedy, makikita niyo ibang mga reporters, you can see it from their face. Umiiyak, lumuluha. Yeah, you, can, you can feel it through the, the way they report, ang expression. Kaya ngaya, noong during the height ng no, mga demonstrations, mm -hmm. yeah, before the declaration of martial law, ang... ang mismong training namin, don't show emotions sa sound or sa visual. Uh, I think the coverage, uh, the media coverage of Yolanda, uh, before it hit and after it hit, was ample. In fact, I would even say, uh, nasobrahan nga ng ibang broadcast reporters in the sense na, they're, they're, kasi hindi kumi, madalas hindi naiintindihan ng televiewer or no radio listener, yun, to what extent reporters would go just to deliver the news. Kung ako yung editor, nung, kung ako yung boss ng maraming reporters, may memohan ko mga, mga yun eh. For self-endangerment eh. In fact, nung, nung panahon kasi natin, maho stage kami. Mm -hmm. Ang pag-uwi namin sa, pagbalik namin sa opisina, pinakaano lang sa amin, tapik. Ngayon, mahigpit na ang mga managers ngayon. Hindi ka pwedeng basta gumawa ng ganyan, tapos mapapahamak yung, 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 ano mo, ma, ma, yung taking too much risk, uh, mamememohan ka eh. Kaya nga, naisip ko nga, mam mamememohan itong mga reporter na to sa ginagawa nila. Ito na yung bagyo, lalabas pa sila ng, ng yeah, ano, just to deliver the news. Tapos, halos mm -hmm. mahipan, na, matangay na sila ng hangin. Ang, yun nga, and, and that's why I'm saying, ample ang coverage talaga. And I, I salute the mm -hmm. reporters who, who were there before and after it hit. All right, thank you very much. We only have time for one more question at this time. We have Jarel from the college, UP College of Architecture. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good afternoon, sir. Um, I just want to react on the idea that was said a while ago about the paranoid constitution wherein the constitution does not allow uh, foreign companies or foreign um, corporations to build um, build media corporation here in the country. But um, my question is, isn't it just um, proper for um, the constitution to mandate that because as parang sa pag-iisip ko parang it's another pagpinayagan natin yung parang it's another way of um, allowing these foreign countries to um, dictate on us again and and parang I cannot I cannot imagine these um, corporations um, taking over the television radio and print oh. I guess Jerry you will start yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I I say it's paranoid because why what what are we afraid of why are we afraid of foreigners. In uh, 2015, two years from now, there will be an ASEAN economic uh, complementation. We will become, hopefully, we, it pushes through, we will become the, the, the next European Union of Southeast Asia. Now, like the, the European Union, uh, the, the Southeast Asian economic uh, cooperation, uh, economic community would require the breakdown of uh, investment barriers. Uh, Malaysians should be free to invest in any industry in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And Filipinos should be free to invest in any industry in Southeast Asia, within the 10 countries. Why are we so afraid of foreigners investing in our media? Is there any... Are we so weak? Are we so, so dumb that we cannot uh, discern, for instance, any control or any influence any attempt to unduly influence the content of the media? How can we ensure that they will, if indeed, if it will be open to foreigners, how can we ensure that we won't be dictated by the ones who have, who can wield more power with the media? Uh, con 
the, you will, at the end of the day, you will be the judge of content mm -hmm. of, of newspapers, radio, uh, television, and social media. So, ako, ang, ang feeling ko dyan, uh, it's also, uh, uh, yung, yung ASEAN economic cooperation all, would, also, would also require that uh, professions, professionals be able to practice within the 10 countries without barriers eventually. Now, our engineers, architects should be able to work in Thailand, same, same way. Now, are we afraid to do that? Maybe we are afraid because we have not prepared ourselves for that. And that is why we're, 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 we're scared of it. But uh, other countries, Singapore, they have prepared. So they're not afraid of it. Here. Um, if we talk about the culture of criticism, when we talked about foreign media coming in, the foreigners have a very good critique kind of culture. But the Filipinos, we parang picon tayo. Eh. And in fact, even in any kind of field, whether it's film reviews, even the media, there doesn't seem to be this clear or good, you know, healthy culture of criticism. What do you think of the media? Are we able to criticize each other properly? Uh, you know, are we able to review each other's work properly? Because the danger here too is sometimes when wrong facts are put out or, you know, we're not being very professional and it's put to our attention, we cannot take this wrong uh, negative criticism. attention, right? Mm -hmm. What do you have to say? Siguro kapag ka makikriticize ka, mayroon kang strong basis, no? Especially kung makikriticize ka at hindi mo naman alam ang solusyon, eh, medyo timbang-timbangin mo muna. It should be constructive criticism. Hindi lang yung banat ang banat ang banat. Marinig ka lang ng tao na sanasabing, oops, may alam ito. But if you came from, yeah, yeah, from the past, facing similar situations and crisis, magsalita ka, pwede mong i-backtrack ang experience mo, you can deliver the right message doon sa kinikiliticize mo. I have a couple of ideas about, uh, in response to your question. One is, uh, I cannot accept the tendency of, of, of some of us to, to use foul language and be personal when differing with the opinion or the, or the report of a certain... Uh, Reporter, for instance, uh, uh, I would see in uh, some newspapers in reaction to to certain columns. Sa bayaran ka kasi or ano no? Uh, I think that those who say that should rethink themselves. Eh. No. And then, you know, uh, sa ano man, yung, yung what you say, uh, how we accept uh, criticism also. Um, we in the mainstream media have certain rules to follow. Like if we, have, if we make a mistake, we have to correct that mistake immediately. And uh, I have an advice for, for those who may want to, to go into the media. If you make a mistake, correct it and then apologize for it. Uh, apologizing does not, in the, in, 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 in namin sa Tagalog, hindi nababawasan ang pagkalalaki mo dyan eh nadadagdagan ang pagkatao mo. Tama. Tama okay. We've come to the end of the program. Just final words from both of you. Your final words, your keep on the educating ourselves. Walang mawawala. Your keep on tracking, watch your favorite shows, listen to your favorite uh, broadcasters, keep on reading, and keep on uh, internetting. <laughs> All right, Keep and uh, good luck. You are the future media. Again, in, uh, as an advice to those uh, budding uh, media men, I would, I would always advise you to read, read, read. Aral, aral, aral. Yung walang katapusang pag-aaral because that is the only way you can, you can uh, also help your readers, your listeners, your viewers. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Jairus Bondok. Thank you so much, Mr. Ray Langit. And of course, thank you also to May Paner, who was with us earlier. And thank you for joining us in our first year anniversary on air here at the University of the Philippines Engineering Theater. Thank you so much. Sitting in for Jing Magsaysay, I'm Amalyn Veloso. And I'm Mitzi Borromeo. See us again next week for another episode of News Cafe. Good night. News Cafe would like to thank the following partners. 
the University of the Philippines College of Engineering Administration, the University Student Council, University of the Philippines Diliman, the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, BS Entrepreneurial Management and Bachelor in Elementary Education students, and the UP Alpha Phi Omega Service Fraternity.